Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, are taking a look at race number 10 at Arlington Park on Saturday. It's the Grade 1 Beverly D Stakes for Phillies and Mares, and it's a Breeders' Cup Challenge Series event. A win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Let's take a look at this field. We're going a mile and three sixteenths for $600,000. A real rock-solid field of nine. Your morning line favorite at nine to five, trained by who else? Chad Brown. It's the number three sister, Charlie. Sister Charlie Brown. Broke my heart in the Diana last time out at a mile and an eighth, and I still haven't recovered. Yeah, that, that's that's about as tough a beat as you're going to find with Ultra Brat, who was 15 to 1 that day, or somewhere in that whereabouts, not to rehash old memories. But if you're looking at this mare coming in, or this filly, as far as this race is concerned, I think you've got to be a little bit unsure of what you're going to get out of her, because... This is a little bit of a quick turnaround for her. Chad said they basically wanted to get two more races into her prior to the Breeders' Cup. And just timing-wise, if you think the Flower Bowl is going to be the logical prep for her leading into Louisville, this is kind of the race by default. Now, she was really late with the lead change in that Diana. And that's, you and I talked about it a little bit. She's always a little bit quirky, but this was exceptionally late. And I just wonder, maybe if you're going to beat her, now is the time. But she has always been a rock-solid filly, eight of nine in the exact, a runner-up in both the French and Belmont Oaks last year. And listen, she got up to win the Diana. She's got a lot of heart as well. Let's take the rest of the field in post-position order. Hey, Daddy's Little Darlin's a real underrated filly. She's banked $1.3 million in her career for Kenny McPeak, and she comes off uh, a win in the local prep, the grade three modesty handicap. And I thought she ran hard from start to finish, chasing a solid pace. Now, maybe that wasn't the strong edition of the modesty but she draws a great inside post position and i find it fascinating that as she's gotten older she's gotten more tactical yeah i love that she has that sort of added gear where she can be relatively close to the pace and really you just look at that modesty most recently time form us had all those fractions internally color-coded red and you look at some of the pace ratings a 152 and a 140 for her she's moving out there and she extended down the lane I guess the tough thing is, I understand Hallie Bell came back. She was the third place finisher, and she earned a 90 in her next start. The rest of the field, though, kind of as you alluded to, I just think, boy, she's facing leaps and bounds better horses this time around. I like her. I respect her. I just do wonder a little bit, is this going to be too tough? The number two, Nyaletti, is a three-year-old taking on Elders. She won the Group 2 German, 1,000 guineas, two starts back. Well beaten in a Group 1 in Britain last time out. We say it all the time in these stakes previews. When ranking these European races, you got to go France, then Britain and Ireland, and then probably Germany and Italy bring up the rear. So Nyaletti is going to be facing some tough company here. Certainly is. I'm not going to hold that last race against her facing older and facing Alpha Centauri, who looks like she could be anything. Uh, Naya Letty, I just, I hate to say it. I understand you got to respect any of the Europeans that come over. I think she's facing a good group of domestic horses here. I don't like her. Dona Brua ran a good second in last year's Beverly D. Has always run well at Arlington Park. Brings an enviable 11 for 16 record to the fray. What happened last time out in the grade one Jenny Wiley? It was a situation where she went to the front she established a clear early lead and sister charlie just ran her over in the lane i wonder if she is in a in a sense and you're gonna have to just bear with me i wonder if she's in a sense a little bit like proctor's ledge for brendan walsh where they just don't like keeneland and you've talked about this for a long long time and i agree 100 percent sometimes horses just can't act down at keeneland for one reason or another over that turf course it's a little bit a little on the quirkier side Dona Bruja, you take those two Keeneland races out of her PPs, this one most recently, the Jenny Wiley, and then the First Lady last year, all you're left with first and second place finishes here in the States, whether it's at Arlington or it's at Churchill Downs. To me, she's the kind of horse, I know this was sort of by design to bring her in off of such a long layoff. Boy, you're going to have to be absolutely ready to go and fire your best shot if you're going to beat all of these Chad horses and all these other competitors in here. I think she's logical. But, and as much as I like her, I just think she's going to have a lot to do if she's going to beat all of them. Nice to know, though, that she can win from off the pace or on the lead. Plenty of options. The number five taste looks overmatched, let's be honest, here for Chad Brown. And it makes me wonder, as we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, has this one got bunny ears on? Yeah, I, I, that's the way that I look at it. I can't help but see that uh, Sister Charlie is owned by Peter Brandt and uh, part owner of this filly is Peter Brandt. I think you look and see her running style. She's overmatched from a class standpoint and she's relatively forward as far as turf runners are concerned. 
I think the job here is to get out there and just make sure that there's an honest pace. And that would set things up, obviously, for Sister Charlie. The six is oh so terrible. She's not terrible at all at Arlington. She's won two of four. Last time out, though, in an optional claiming race, I thought a little bit disappointed. A solid pace, if you believe the time form, U.S. red color coding pace fractions. But she's just not classy enough to win this race right now on paper. Yeah, plain and simple. There's really not no need to go into it more in depth than that. She's just slow on paper. She's up against it class-wise. Look, I wish the connection's nothing but the best. Hope they go out there and get a little bit of a thrill, but I just think it's very unlikely. The number seven four-star crook is a racehorse. She's won 11 of 17, $1.2 million, a classic overachieving New York bred who beat Sister Charlie last time out in the grade two New York when both of those horses benefited from a ridiculous barbecue up front. But you gotta give Four Star Crook a little bit of credit. She wasn't the one making the last move and she still held off Sister Charlie. Boy, I can't knock this one at all. No, there's nothing to knock about her. She just goes out and shows up and runs her race. And it felt like for a long time, the connections were content looking at her as a nice New York bread and just collecting all those checks. And then all of a sudden, when they tested her, she acquitted herself quite nicely. I think she's a legitimate filly in here. And again, if you like Sister Charlie, don't you have to kind of like Four Star Crook? Not just because Four Star Crook finished ahead of her, but they're going to get very similar trips as far as the pace is uh, concerned. And I just think just the form that she's shown, you have to consider her a major contender. Let's take a look at our top selections for the grade one Beverly D. Matt, let's talk about the number nine, Athena. I know she's a three-year-old taking on elders, but her win in the Belmont Oaks, that was a wow performance for this Aiden O'Brien trained filly. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't like her going into the Belmont Oaks. I just didn't think her form over in Europe was all that strong. And I just kind of felt like she needed to up her game considerably. Well. She did just that. I thought visually it was tremendous. And she beat a pretty decent field of three-year-old fillies that we had this year. I liked everything about it. You heard the connections talk about it. They think the distance is really going to be what she wants. She is as beautifully bred as any horse arguably in the world. I just think there's a lot to like here, maybe other than the price. Three to one doesn't really get me going. I do wonder with the presence of 15 million chat horses. I wonder if maybe Athena goes off into that four to one, nine to two range. And if she does... I jump on her there. I'll take the last of the 15 million shad <laughs> horses, and that's the eight in flexibility. Good enough to be third in the Queen's Plate last year, going a mile and a quarter on synthetic. I am really not worried about this distance. She won the Wonder Wear at a mile and a quarter on turf at Woodbine. And I think her last race, the grade two Dance Smartly, is a little bit better than it looks on paper. According to Time Form US, those fractions were hot. She was pulling in the early portion of that race. It was hard for Javier to keep a hold on her, so Javier let her run. She put away all the pace challengers, and then Chad beat her. Santa Monica came running at the wire. She still finished ahead of two next out winners. It was a career best buyer performance. And I think of the Chad horses, she gets the jump on everybody turning into the lane. I think she has a legitimate chance to be a surprise package at a price. No, I agree 100%. I liked her in the dance smartly, and I thought she ran so well. I think she ran better than Santa Monica did, and I know that sounds a little silly because Santa Monica actually won the race, but I thought inflexibility did the majority of the lifting there. And I think you bring up the key point here. She is going to get the jump basically on everyone, including the, the European shippers. There's a real scenario where if she gets first run and she hits the lane at the top anyway, I think there's a real scenario where maybe she just doesn't stop and she keeps going. I think she's going to be interesting and she should be a price. Matt, give me numbers. I'm going to go nine, three, seven, and eight. I'm going eight, three, seven, and four in the grade one Beverly D, part of the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series. A win and you're in for the Philly and Mare turf. You can catch all the action 6 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Best of luck.